Hey buddies, welcome to Video Games Awesome Live. This is a lonesome entry into the world of Bloodborne. A world in which we still haven't really figured out yet. The story thus far, from what I can tell, is that you... Well, they keep on referring to stuff like the hunter's dream and the hunt. And I'm a hunter and I'm hunting beasts. And I signed up to do it. And, like most Souls games, the story is just being doled out in very small snippets as you go along. Um, I'll let you know that off, I played this off show a little bit. Just the stuff that you already saw me play through. I restarted my character about three or four times, um, trying the different weapons and different builds in order to decide what I thought was good for me. What I decided was... Um, I think most important to a new player, this is just from my uh, my limited perspective on the game so far, the most oh, important yeah. thing is vitality. Um, <laughs> we've seen this. Well, you've come to oh, the we'll right play place. It out. Yarnum is the home of blood ministration. Blood you need only unravel its mystery. But where's an outsider like yourself to begin? Easy, with a bit of yarn and blood of your own. But first, you'll need a contract. Um, so I decided that uh, vitality is important because... Uh, not, not just because a beginner obviously needs a little bit extra health in order to be able to survive, but second... Um, because of this new technique in which you slash to get your health back, you can survive a lot of stuff if you just have enough health to take the first couple blows and then slash to get that health back. And that's what I think. Having a really good health buffer is important. So I'm going to start a character with higher vitality and higher strength um, than what I started. I chose what I thought would be the background for the character we created, which is... And thank goodness for these saved presets, because I can just start a new character that looks the exact same right away. Um, what I'm going to do, though, first of all, I have to change it to aged. Ages. i am changed it to aged, like, my actual face is more wrinkly now. And I'm going to change the, the, the hair color. I'm going to change it. Is it possible to make the hair gray? Maybe by putting in... There we go. <laughs> I was thinking this. Because somebody sent me an image of Scrooge McDuck. And his hair was pretty much the same color as his feathers, just slightly grayer. So I think this is what I'm going with. Alright. Aw, oh, shit! Hate it when that happens. I think that's good. It's the middle one now that I have saved. And now I just have to choose a background. My origin, I think I'm going to go with Violent Past, because that has a decent amount of vitality, lots of strength. It's either that or I choose Lone Survivor, which has the highest amount of vitality. Um, average strength and skill. Low blood tinge and arcane, which... Um, so blood tinge decides how powerful your gunshots are, which we've all really kind of... It, doesn't, it seems like it only affects how powerful your gunshots are. And in this game, you guys were right. Like, uh, you, the power of your gunshot isn't what matters. It's just that you hit with your gunshot at all. And that's dependent on skill, I think, not blood tinge. So why blood tinge is even a stat, I don't understand. Because who's going to make a build 
maybe there will be builds where you go through shooting guys and try to make your gunshots actually powerful. I could imagine a build that has high vitality and high blood tinge and you continuously just regenerate. You give yourself more bullets and you just spam bullets at guys, but that's still kind of odd. But anyways, I'm going to go with Violent Past. I like high strength. I like being able to one-shot guy. Um, Alright. Now, I think that's it. Violent Past. Finish. I said finish. Oh, a name is required. I gotta enter that again. Alright. Lady Cumberhatch. Mm -mm -mm. Another thing that I fi figured out, um, a major thing I did and I practiced uh, with for the, um, when I was playing on my own, was how to do visceral attacks. And the instructions on how to do visceral attacks, and I just watched a video that Polygon put out telling people how to do visceral attacks, which is really all they did was just explain what's in the instructions, is wrong. There is one extra step, one more instruction that has been left out of everybody's explanation for how to do visceral attacks. I was trying to figure out why I'm not doing them. I would get guys, stagger them, put them to their knees, and then I'd attack and my character would always just do a slash. Every time. I would just do a stupid, like, slash, like a regular R1 attack. And then I figured out that you have to wait like just a half second after you stagger them. If you shoot, stagger them, and then immediately attack, you'll slash them. But if you shoot, stagger them, then watch for their animation to actually knee to the ground, that knee has to hit the ground. Some characters won't have a knee, but you know what I'm saying. Like they have to finish their stagger animation, then you press R1, then you'll do a visceral attack. And every fucking tip out there that tries to tell you how to do a visceral attack doesn't include that part. They're just saying, they're like, and I quote, Polygon said, stagger them, then start hammering on that R1. No, don't. And it just, it annoys me when people like, give tips as though they're the experts on it and they, just, they don't explain things like that because that doesn't help the beginner in any way. It just confuses the beginner. I missed that the first time. Seek Pale Bud to transcend the hunt. Well, that's weird, because I am Pale Blood, so is that a note to me or a note to somebody else? I'm gonna try to beat this werewolf this time. I haven't yet beat him. Even in my, my retries, I haven't been able to beat the werewolf yet. I always get very close and then get hit by him. and did that? He doesn't usually start with his triple attack. See all that returning of my health I've been doing? That's like a huge part of this game, is getting your health back after you got hit. And that's why I think high vitality really matters. I still stand by my word, um, my initial analysis, that visceral attacks are for multiple playthroughs. Like, you should still probably be trying to use them in your first playthrough, otherwise how will you learn, but you can't rely on them. There, I've gone up against guys who, you could have sworn that you would have staggered them, but you don't. Because they, oh, I haven't, I don't feel like I've seen that attack from them before. I 
I got cut! Oh, I got cut on that fucking table! Oh well. Um. So anyways, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I, that's my main two observations so far. I've learned how to do viscerals, and everybody who's tried to teach people how to do viscerals has left out key instruction of wait a half second. And second, vitality is one of the most important stats. Unlike in, in Dark Souls, where vitality doesn't really matter that much. I mean, it does, but as long as you can survive, like, a normal hit in Dark Souls, that's about as much health as you need, and then you want to concentrate on like all your other stats. But in this one, I'm gonna try to get to 25 on Vitality as fast as I can. All right, so when you get here, I'm pretty sure there's nothing you really have to do except go get your weapons. I also, I've experimented with all three weapons, and my favorite is Hunter's Axe. <laughs> I, the, the cane was a bad choice, but I stand by my choice because I do think the cane suits Lady Cumberhatch in style, but um, I really prefer the axe. It's the same reason I like playing through the game with Zweihander and Giant Clubs. It's my style. I love it. And then, uh, I hate the blunderbuss. I don't really see a, a reason to go with Blunderbuss um, because it's slow and it's been very rare, at least in early games, that I'm not able to hit with the pistol. So why go Blunderbuss when you can go with the more po First of all, the pistol does more damage and second of all, the only downside is it has less durability. The Blunderbuss is supposed to be easier to hit with, like, but I just, like I said, haven't ran into a, a moment where I didn't hit. Um, all right, and then and the notebook. All right, time to head back in after I equip this. Oops. Well, I guess I'll equip the notebook. Yeah, I can see the um. So cool Maverick. I could see that like the, the whip being like an advanced type weapon that you get to know some really good combos. Just like wielding dual whips in like Dark Souls 2 that if you get to like, you get really good at advanced techniques. But again, advanced techniques in a Souls game require some pretty good knowledge of the enemies and their movements and that requires at least one playthrough. So. For your first playthrough, you should you should kind of be just trying to survive and get the fundamentals down instead of crazy cool combos. Um, and for the for things like the cane to be powerful, you need to be sort of a skill build instead of a strength build, and skill builds also tend to be much more difficult for the beginner than than a strength build when you're just learning enemy movements. All right, so here's why I should have gone. And again, I stand my, by my choice to go Kane for style reasons the first episode, but check this out. <laughs> He's like, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the axe is good for a beginner, and it's actually, like, Bloodborne is, from my perspective so far, again, this is just from a couple hours of practicing, it's easier than Dark Souls. Uh, I can't, I remember it taking quite some time, even with a strength build in Dark Souls 1, to get to the point where you could one-hit even normal baddies, just the like regular little skeletal guys, like the hollows, um, to one hit those guys it usually took like getting to level 10 or something. Well I guess my character is at level 10, which may be the big difference here. Oh, I have to go get that extra item.
Well, so far the earlier up, the earlier levels are easier in my opinion. The earlier parts. That's my. Are you? Then I'm. I am Yosefka. The patients here in what? my clinic must not be exposed to infection. I know that you hunt for oh, us. Oh shit! Okay. For our town, but I'm sorry. Please. It starts easier. Well, that's kind of funny, but it gets harder. It's funny because to me, what made Dark Souls so hard was that the beginning is so hard. And I usually found Dark Souls not that difficult, except for maybe the odd boss would be hard. But I found that Dark Souls wasn't that difficult once you get going. So I guess they've switched it up this time. They've made it harder as you go instead of harder at the beginning. So the barrier to entry is not as crazy. Has anybody ever found anything in this graveyard? I've searched and searched, and I keep thinking there should be something here, but I haven't found anything yet, besides this, obviously. The Quicksilver bullets. I don't think there's anything else in here. Yeah, the feet full is pretty horrible, Becky. It's very distracting. No matter what surface you're running on, it's the same clop, 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 clop. Except for maybe if you're running through water. All right, time to start playing. Let me try to stagger this guy. There we go. There's a visceral. Of course, that's kind of a waste, besides using it to practice. It's a waste of a bullet, because that guy doesn't need to be staggered. I'm gonna try to do a jump attack on this guy. Oh, wait, no, he's rushing me. Um, so guys, maybe you can educate me here. What have you found are combos in this game? Uh, the standard combos. I remember knowing them all in Dark Souls 2, like the different things that you can do. But in this I found like, the combos include Spam R1 until you do that. Um, let's see here. Spam R1 and then press L1 at any time to do that. And that's the same no matter where you do it in the combo, I find. Yeah. I wonder if you can actually do it at the end of the combo. One, two, three, four. And I didn't have enough vitality to do the final bit, so... I mean, endurance. Um... Then R1 with double-handed does this. Here's another spam R1. Um, one, two, then L1. So there's L1 is a part of the combo whether you start or end with it. Backstabs, yes. Uh, I found that you have to be locked on in order to do the, the backstep attack. So I can't really practice it here. And there is no combo with R2 with this double-handed. But what you can do with this... Is that. Which is why I love the axe. It's one of the best crowd control. Um, roll, roll R2 and, and then L1 is good for heavies. Okay, roll R2, then L1. Interesting. Let me try it with one-handed. Oops. Roll R2, 
L1. I could see that working, but how about just a run and R2? Let's try it with one handed now. Oh, that's not bad either. Um, the one thing with the axe, out of the three weapons that you can choose from from the beginning, it's the only one that when you go two handed, puts away your gun. So, keep that in mind, noobs. But, you know, every time I hear that sound, I want to see where it's coming from. I think it's supposed to be over there. I think that's where I end up fighting that thing, but I can't, yeah. So I didn't know the first time I played this on the show that this is this save point lets you head back to camp. So let's head on back. For all that time Becky was getting nervous about me playing and playing without a save, I could have just headed back right at this point. You mean R2, Stealth Oblivion? All right. So, this is the shopkeep where you spend your blood, blood echoes. And the only thing he really has for sale is the full set of um, Hunter's Garb. And I have just enough to get the hat, so let's get the hat. And I'll put that on right now. Let me see if I can get a shot of this. There we go. Looking good. So, as with Dark Souls, I would really rather not collect... I mean, I don't want to gather more souls than there are enemies available to me. I don't like grinding and I don't like inadvertent grinding even Dark Souls allows for inadvertent grinding meaning you try an area over and over again you recollect your souls over and over again and you earn way more souls than you ever should have if you hadn't died at all um, and I, I, I don't like leveling up faster than I feel like I should be because I feel like in previous Souls games like Especially Dark Souls 2, I found it got too easy once you started to get to a certain power level. I'll still continue to say this about Souls games. I wish that they would make enemies not respawn at all. Once you beat an enemy, it's gone. I know that it would make the game less punishing, but on the other hand, it would make it so that you can't, you can't grind. But yeah, it would make it less... Maybe enemies, once you've collected their souls, shouldn't give souls again. Maybe the enemies should respawn, but you shouldn't get souls from them when you fight them twice. Maybe that's how they could do it. But I, I, I really wish that souls were finite. The other thing I love about the axe is it's so easy to make a guy poise break. But yeah, yeah, like I agree, Light Ace, or is it the Nez? It is the weakest part of these games, the fact that you can grind. Everybody talks about how hard they are and like, I beat Dark Souls, and I want to respond to that, well, how many times did you recollect souls? Like, what level did you beat Dark Souls on? Because beating Dark Souls isn't the same for everybody. If you leveled up to some crazy-ass level, you know, it probably was still a challenge, but nowhere near as much of a challenge as the guy who refused to collect his souls when he died. 
So we know that down here is this dude that I defeated eventually with the cane, which was pure masochism. I'm not going to go up against him now because there's there's no reason to. You don't benefit from it. Like, you don't get anything extra from him. So I'm just opening that door. You just get a couple extra blood echoes. It's good practice, I guess. But I'm just going to try to move the show along here. I once found a note net down here that said, Don't be fooled. And you that outsider? Well, sorry, but I don't want anything to do with you. Trot along, will ya? Guy says, don't be, f this one says, don't be fooled. One time I came here and it said, fire is the key or something, and you collect blood echoes there. I mean, a Molotov there. So I threw fire, like I threw Molotovs at everything in this area to see if like, you could unlock something. But I couldn't. Has anybody figured out anything about this little courtyard that I haven't? I thought maybe knocking this bucket down would work. I thought maybe burning this, this would work. It obviously just means there's Molotovs here. I'm gonna, like, why has this person's note been rated up 40 times? It could be a response to a bo bogus. Oh yeah, it just says appraisal's not that it was voted up. So anywhere where you see this, these these lamps that are lit, that means it's a door that you can go knock on. Uh oh. <laughs> I didn't know you guys were gonna come while I was talking to a dude. This is why I love the axe. It gets you out of sticky situations like that. Although I'd say that my reflexes there weren't bad either. That's what you get when you play a Souls game as soon as you wake up and get your coffee into you. Fast reflexes. See, I, you would think that would have staggered him, right? Weird. Because I, I could have sworn he had his thing up. I'm going to try to stagger this dude. There we go. The other thing I kind of wish is that you, um, that they gave you a reward, uh, that they gave you a reward for visceral attacks, like some sort of like extra blood echoes or something like that, instead of just, like what's the point of a visceral besides doing more damage? I think it would be nice if you got a bonus for doing more visceral attacks, that way it would give you a reason to be using them for fun on smaller enemies. There's the, the step back here, check it out. I got all my health back. So, like in other games before it, um, the only reason to be um, 
uh, clearing baddies out and not running past them is that you want to get all the weapons or the items in the area. And the only way to really do that safely is to kill everybody first. Also, I do want to level up with the souls or the blood echoes that are afforded to me through normal playing. So I'm going, I'll admit, right now I'm playing with the benefit of having played this area a couple times. Like, I know that I can't be shot here. Whereas last time, I was terrified to come down here. Oh, I can be shot. There's one dude right... Oh my god! Oh my god! Damn it! I got overwhelmed! Fuck! Well, practice doesn't always make perfect. I've actually found that with those dudes with the torches, um, that they catch me off guard. I still haven't been able to figure out when they use the torch and when they don't. If they don't use the torch, you're pretty much safe. But when they use the torch, it staggers you, like, immediately and no matter what. Every time. All right. So I'm just going to rush past all these dudes, since I've already beat them. What did that do? I got all the items down there, right? Yeah. I got everything. I don't need those souls. And yes, I'm probably never going to call them Blood Echoes. So that's pretty much all there was to that area. It was that mob. It's not worth fighting them. It takes way too long because there's so many of them. And as long as you got that one little... The main thing is that I got that, that shard, and that's how you fortify your weapons. That's how you upgrade your weapons. I don't reckon you're from around here. Well, I'll you poor, poor thing. <laughs> so the last time, on the first episode we played this, we couldn't figure out what it was talking about for a hidden path. There was a note here that said hidden path. In fact, I'll leave one right now, because I know there is. Uh... Maybe that'll get me some extra health. So anyways, I didn't know that this stuff was destructible yet. <laughs> At that point because I'd only encountered these ones that aren't destructible so far, so I just figured everything was indestructible, and then you can knock all that down, and this is the hidden path right here. So I haven't gone down there yet because I didn't want to do anything on show that I hadn't. I didn't want to do anything off show that I hadn't done on show, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait and go down there in a moment. First, I'm gonna clear the stuff that I know. And that's these crows over here. And that rewards you with an oil urn. And the oil urn can be equipped like an item here which I guess covers a guy in oil and then makes him more vulnerable to fire attack. And what I discovered over here, I don't think I ever ended up defeating this guy, did I? Because one of these 
off show I defeated him and one of these two things on the ground there is a torch. I'm gonna try to get this guy with an R2 attack from behind. I didn't recover fast enough from my own attack. Oh, I might have been able to get a visceral on him. Here, I'm gonna try for a visceral. There we go. That guy's a good example of where viscerals are hard to do because you think that as soon as he goes like this, you can do they can shoot him and stagger him, but you can't. You have to wait until his hammer's like right around here, and then you can stagger him. Ooh, shining coins. I didn't get those before. What are they? Oh, for fuck's sakes. Oh, it's just like breadcrumbs to show you the way or something. Lame. So this torch. So this is useful because not only for, I guess, dark areas, but this will also probably light guys on fire when I want to. We'll see. I haven't used it yet to actually do that to anybody. We'll see if it's effective. Up here, I think I remember, yeah, there's some dogs. groups are annoying because you can like sometimes you can do well sometimes like they end up being really overwhelming and I'm not like good enough to know how to deal with them yet because you have to know everybody in the group their movement right One of those a gun? Yeah, one of them has a gun. Yep. It's one of the most dangerous things going up against groups because it's one thing to be able to predict the movement of one enemy, but when you've got five, a human mind can't really <laughs> keep tabs on all of them at once, right? I'm gonna try to rush them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I kind of underestimated how much a bullet staggers your character. Can I knock this? What's this? Why is the inside of this well so lit up? 
That's what, like, I mean, with Souls games, I always wonder, is it a glitch? Or do they want me to pay special attention to this well that is inexplicably lit from the inside? Or is it a glitch where the well is not blocking the light that's coming down over here from what location? I have no idea, because there's no lighting source for this. You'd think that there was a big moon out or something, but this light is just arbitrary. Oh wait, is it coming? No. It's just an arbitrary light. So this really makes me think, like, is this a secret? There's a big sun? Where? I don't see a big sun. Behind the buildings. Oh, well, in my experience, buildings block light from sun. <laughs> so the fact that this shiny blue part, this, this light, pale light here is here, it's just, it's confusing and distracting. And it's an example of why graphics matter. Why glitches matter in games where it's all about exploration and noticing things that are odd and off. In a Zelda game, if I saw something like that, I would just assume, like, this is a secret, because Nintendo wouldn't make this mistake, right? But in a Souls game, I'm constantly wondering, am I looking at a glitch or am I looking at a secret? And actually, that's not an issue of graphics mattering, that's an issue of... Um, Polish, not graphics. All right, so this is the part where I died. I rushed past these guys last time and end up at the boss, but... I've taken these guys on a couple times off show and been able to beat them barely with the ax. Should I take them on now or see what's on the other side of this bridge? Can I skip past them? Or do I backtrack and go see what that secret is all about? I'd rather not take on those wolves right now. Especially since I feel like there's more to explore first because of that secret. And I feel like those wolves are kind of like the point of no return. So let's see what's down here. Hello, doggies. Oh, that one got out. I don't want to be mob, mother fucker. I should be a little bit more cautious in areas that I haven't been yet. <laughs> I didn't see the third dog though when I looked down. Great, somebody's hammering in the back behind the studio. Perpetual construction in this neighborhood. You gotta love these loading screens. Did you know there's actually people on YouTube blaming me for the loading screen? That's how far it's gone. If you criticize anything in a Souls game, it's always your fault, including slow loading screens. People said it was my fault I didn't put a solid state hard drive in to my PlayStation. That it's my fault because PlayStation taught everybody how to do it and I should have known to put a solid state in to make games load quicker. That's how far it's gotten and that's why maybe you guys can understand why I'm so fucking sick of comments on YouTube and why I don't allow them. I'm just sick of idiocy. It makes me sick. I'm done with it. Um, 
S is, uh, yeah, it's true, Cypran. People have done tests and found that SSDs don't even do that big of a difference. Was this hat there before? Huh. All right, so as you guys know from previous playthroughs in Dark Souls 1 and 2 with me, I will collect my souls so long as I didn't defeat the dudes that gave me those souls in the first place. So that's my whole thing is I don't want to collect extra souls. So as long as I will collect these souls if I was able to get here without killing the guys who gave me the souls I'm about to collect. Oh, and they gave the souls to this dog in here. I might not even be able to get them back. Oh, I got them back. Since killing a guy gets your souls back automatically, I might not even have the choice of not collecting souls. Oh, I got unlucky activating that dog. Because look at him. He's not even activating now. Oh. <laughs> I do, Becky. I'm going to try to kill these dogs before they get out. Uh, that makes me think boss door way down there. Oh, I'm fucking, I'm already falling into the old trap. You dummy, you don't run towards a fucking item at the end of a hallway and figure you're not going to be ambushed. All right, I got to get my head back in the game. Right, I'm going to avoid down there, because that looks like a completely different area now. A bonfire waits ahead. Oh. Uh, do you think they're lying or not? I need to see that it's not lying before I do rate it. Ah, fuck it. I'm just going to hope. Is it? Is this guy right? Is a bonfire lying ahead? I want to give him a... <laughs> a plus one if he's right, but I don't want to have to come back to do it. Sort of right. I'll say it's fine then. As long as it's in the next five minutes. So where's this bonfire? beat this guy first. Hey, where'd he go? What? There was a... I swear to God, there was a dude just standing here. Did anybody else see that? That's creepy. I looked down at the chat and looked back up and he was gone. You guys saw it too? That was weird. He was like right there. I hear something big. Whoa. Hmm. gonna avoid that because I don't know what's around that corner for all I know there's like oh god oh fuck oh man why'd I open that door and then leave it <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I 
I was so preoccupied with the sounds coming from over here that I forgot that I opened that door. <laughs> Time for lights. Oh. Okay. Yeah, sure. Alright, so... Watch when I go down there later, it's gonna be nothing. over there. Oh, there's stairs. Is that a wheelchair? Oh, it's an NPC. What's up? Whoa, what? No! Whoa! What? I thought it was gonna be like the wheelchair guy from the intro. What is pungent blood cocktail? Oh! Oh! Oh, that's what I was seeing. It's a premonition of another player. Okay. Thrown to attract beasts. When the hunt began, the healing church left us, blocking the great bridge to Cathedral Ward as the old Yarnum burned to the ground that, in that moonlit night. So this guy was a baddie. I hope he was a baddie. I hope I didn't destroy an NPC. No, he started shooting first. Alright, so do I go up these stairs? Or do I go out this door, if this is a door? It is. Oh. I get my gun back. Oh! This is the other side of that area that I was looking down at. There were two guys down there. I guess it's good I didn't run into that willy nilly. <laughs> that seems to be all that's down there. It's just two dudes. I don't see like any items or anything. Unless there's a staircase. over here. So, so far things I've left behind are a staircase inside this building which goes up who knows where and those two dudes over there and the wolf area. Those are the three locations I haven't explored. Oh, and the place that looks like a boss door. Hey, this fucks with my OCD. I want to like Make sure I've seen everything before I move on, but there's so many branches. I don't have OCD. No. A gate? Where's this fucking bonfire that guy was talking about? And now I regret voting it up. Oh. That's a bonfire. This is already lit. Oh, this is the area that I came to with the ladder way, way before. Okay. So I've just opened up that gate that wasn't openable before, so I have a shortcut now. All right, let's head back to the Hunter's Dream and spend my souls.
now when I come back, I'll go through that shortcut and go see what was in the house. Maybe I'll go beat those two dudes for fun. I'm seeing a little bit of that old Souls, um, the stuff that was missing in Dark Souls 2, which is where everything wraps around itself. Doll awake yet? She's not awake. She doesn't, she awoken on her first look when I got defeated by the boss. And she's the one who upgrades your stats, so I can't spend souls with her yet. Oh, this is open now. And I remember this being open when we finished too. But this is open before the doll awakes, so let's talk to this dude. Aha! You must be the new hunter. <laughs> Welcome to the hunter's dream. This will be your home for now. I am German friend to you hunters. You're sure to be in a fine haze about now, but don't think too hard about all of this. Just go out and kill a few beasts. It's for your own good. You know, it's just what hunters do. You'll get used to it. I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I find that everything in this game is too loud except for the voices. Like, I mean, the voices just aren't loud enough. Where is that? Environment? Is that gonna affect his voice or my voice? This was once a safe haven for hunters. A workshop where hunters used blood to enhance their weapons and flesh. We don't have as many tools as we once did, but you're welcome to use whatever you find. Even the doll, should it please you. Oh, that's fucking creepy. You can use whatever you find, even the doll, should it please you. <laughs> this was once a safe... Okay, you creep. This was get him to say that again. You're welcome to even the doll, should it please you. It's a sex doll. I'm sure the rule 34 has already started with that doll. Uh... Wait a minute. I'm gonna fortify my weapon with what? Three bloodstone shards, and I happen to have three bloodstone shards. Or I could fortify my pistol. I'm gonna fortify the axe. Up its damage. Because there's a couple baddies I've been going up against who... Um, who just almost die to one hit, but haven't. Hey, what's the star? See on the stats down there, the D, the E, and then D on the star. What's the star? D is how it scales with your strength. E is um, how it scales with my skill. And then there's arcane. Okay, so this axe scales with arcane as well. Interesting. So the other one is blood tinge. So I got a hunter's axe plus one. Repair it? Okay, that's what I thought. You don't have to repair if you fortify it. It gets, gives you a free repair. What else is in here? <laughs> to escape this dreadful hunter's dream, halt the source of the spreading scourge of beasts, lest the night carry on forever. And then I've explored everything else around here. But let's see if anything else is opened up. The stump messenger still isn't there. Who knows what he does? Alright, let me go talk to the 
the bath messenger. <laughs> Give me a new... Oh, that's 1,000? I have 864. <laughs> what if I sell my... Oh, cool. <laughs> Uh, I'm not a looker. I pretty much look like I am hollow. <laughs> the black hood gets me 150. The foreign garb gets me... I could just sell my black hood and buy the, um... I think that's all I can afford. Five hundred and five hundred. I could get three hundred there, so I could afford one more thing if I take off something. So I'll take off my pants. I'll sell my, yeah, there we go, or, oh, I can't, I can just barely, because I would get 450, and I need 500, unless I use one of my, um, Cold blood do? How many do you think you've ganged from this? Let me try it out. 1,000? Oh, I can get all the equipment now then. I guess I'll just hang on to the other stuff and not sell it so I don't lose souls. Actually, I should take off everything first, right? Let's see what my character looks like. Naked. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Female human Scrooge McDuck. Lady Cumberbatch in the flesh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so I got full hunter's gear. I should take a break. All right, so I've gotten to um about where I need now, I guess I'll uh, take a break and come back and head back in and try to defeat those wolves, try to explore those new areas, including the stairs in the house. Stay tuned, Video Games Lonesome Bloodborne show continues after the break. Uh, which button do I press? Here we go. <laughs>